So I want to talk to you today about making sure you're doing your own work and at the same time as making sure you're learning all that you can, you're also avoiding plagiarizing and avoiding that academic misconduct. So this short little lecture is on how to avoid plagiarism, how to paraphrase or summarize, and in that own your work and make sure that you are um, owning your work and doing your own work, which is how you learn. So let's talk about first, what is plagiarism? So plagiarism is defined um, to pass off and use the ideas or writings of another as your own. Note here, I've used quotes because I'm taking an exact quote. And instead of paraphrasing, instead of putting it in my own words, I'm using the words of the American Heritage Dictionary. Um, there are other ways that you could define plagiarism that I could say myself um, to, to use someone else's work, for example. So that's the definition. Let's not do that. So the idea behind what I'd like you to do is to either paraphrase or summarize. The two are a little different. Um, I'm, this is not an English class. I'm not going to go into um, the, the difference isn't really that important. Um, the point is I want you to be able to understand the material. So written text is the most common that gets plagiarized uh, well enough to be able to put it into your own words. Right. So it's coming from here and that ensures that you're learning and then you're not plagiarizing. So my advice is to try to understand a passage rather than writing down stuff before you understand it. Jotting down notes is fine, right? Like taking notes as you're reading and say so you're reading it, a textbook for class. So make sure, I mean, the goal is to understand it, right? You're here to learn. So try to understand the whole passage. Think about what your own words means. How do I put this in my own words? How would I explain this to someone who doesn't know this? Um, being able to do that, if you explain this to someone in your family or friend who's not in the class, that's what you want to be able to do. Because um, that really shows you understand it. Teaching is the best way to learn. Um, do note you don't need to put quotation marks around general shared language. So you don't even need to worry about. There's some terms that are considered shared language. I believe I have some examples here. Yep, here we go. So these are things you can just use because there is common terminology terminology. So either conventional designations like physician's assistant, um, actually that should be a physician assistant, chronic low back pain, person with disabilities, those phrases, just use them. That's the phrase that's used. Um, technical terms that are discipline specific. So we've got a lot of those in certain classes. Um, here's two examples that are anatomy focused. So dense regular connective tissue. Um, if you're learning about cells, semi-permeable membrane, those terms are fine to use just on their own. However, when in doubt, try to paraphrase. Um, so if you're reading a whole sentence, you never want to copy that whole sentence down. So try to identify what the key points are from the passage. And this is just what you should be doing anyways. If you're reading something, why was I assigned this reading? Why am I reading this? What are the key points of this? Sometimes textbooks aren't so concise. There's a lot of extra stuff there trying to make it interesting. Sometimes it works. Um, either way, what's the key point? What's, what's the point of this um, information? Read it several times. So it takes time to paraphrase and summarize. It takes time to understand information. It doesn't just go in your brain by diffusion. I wish it did. Um, you need to be able to restate this again to someone else. Look away from the source, write it or say it in your own words. It takes several reads, right? You can't just read something once and I mean, some people can. I can't just read it once and know it. Look away from the source, then write. Just similar to the other one. Don't just copy down, look away. So it's coming from your brain instead of coming from the page or the internet or whatever. Take some notes, set them aside, and then paraphrase from those notes later on. Um, it doesn't have to be a day or two later, but kind of after that, the book or the resource you're using is not what you're copying from. So similar to looking away from the source, but taking notes first can is 
totally helpful, right? So the idea behind this, this is my awesome graphic artist skills here at the max. Information is coming in to through your eyes typically. So this would be text if you're reading it, could potentially be me telling you something or another professor, but typically the issue is with text information. The goal is to be able to understand this text, to be able to put it in your own words. So for that to happen, something needs to happen in your brain, right? It's going in through your eyes. You could just copy it, but then it's it's not actually learning. And of course, writing things down is a good way to learn, but it's not a way to solidify learning. So what I want you to do is process that information in your brain and convert it to your own learning. That might not be rewriting it. It might be um, drawing a picture with it. It might be writing in a different way. It might be doing an interpretive dance about the thing. Probably not, right? But it's processing the information to make it your own information and make it your knowledge. That's the goal of being in class. So that information is converted from blue to green. Now that it's green, it can go out your mouth or hand as your words, because they are your words now. Um, and that's then you've learned it. So here's some examples. Um, you can go to this website and see some examples of successful and unsuccessful paraphrasing. So the examples of unsuccessful paraphrasing tend to be where um, patchwork paraphrasing is a common one, where people will take little pieces and just kind of pick out the key points, right? Which is what we want you to do is find the key points, but then it's not rewritten. It's, it's still in the language, in the, the words from the text. And that doesn't show me that you understand it. Um, my goal is to have you learn and to demonstrate your learning, it needs to be processed in your own brain. It takes work, it really does. So this is some practice you can do. Um, two different things is list three examples of shared language from this class. So it does differ in different um, topics. And then number two, paraphrase or summarize a passage from the most recent reading that you've had. So practice doing it and being very deliberate about it. It will become more natural and it will become less burdensome, but it's still, I mean, it's more work than copying down answers. So this is something I want you to do, this paraphrase and summarizing for every single assignment. Um, I don't care if it's a two point homework assignment, um, it needs to be in your own words. And that's to optimize your learning and to show me that you've learned. And at the same time, you're avoiding academic misconduct. Let me know if you have questions. One last thing, when to cite. So this whole talk has not been about citing. It's been about using your own words. But since we're talking about plagiarism, I just want to bring up here um, actual citations. This is a secondary thing to me because most important to me is that you rephrase things. You also want to cite where you get information from. So even if you use your own words, if you got information from a certain source, you should document that source, um, especially in like formal papers, right? Um, cite your, cite your, where you got the information from. And then if you use specific words, like I did at the beginning of this, that's where there's quotes, if you are using the exact words from someone else. And that's ethically okay to do, but I want you to try to avoid it. It's generally, does, it doesn't really show your learning. It shows you were able to find the information, but it doesn't show me that you understand that information. So it should be a rare thing that you do, especially in um, biology type fields. It's probably done even more Rarely, but there are places for it. Like historical quote, for example.